In this video, we're going to go through the different types of solution reactions. Now, at this point in the class, we've seen a lot of chemical reactions, but we've barely scratched the surface on the amount of chemical reactions that exist in all of chemistry. So obviously with this daunting number of possible chemical reactions that exist out there, it's going to be very useful for us to be able to group these uh, chemical reactions into similar processes where similar things occur. And these three reactions represent broad categories that virtually all chemical reactions will fit in one of these three categories. Now, obviously, you can get more specific than these three categories, but these three broad categories uh, capture a lot of chemistry. Precipitation reactions, acid-base reactions, and oxidation reduction reactions. And so what I want to do in this video is go through each of these classes of reactions so that you're familiar with what occurs uh, in these reactions. Um, and, and a little bit more information about what happens uh, and, and how we classify each of these uh, chemical reactions. So first up, let's start with precipitation reactions. So precipitation reactions are when you mix together two solutions and you end up with some insoluble substance, like some insoluble solid that precipitates out of the solution. So in precipitation reactions, you have solutions that are mixed and when the reaction occurs you end up with some insoluble substance right so some insoluble substance forms and this is primarily a solid that forms out of combining two liquid solutions so one example is uh, when you mix potassium chromate so potassium chromate, C, uh, K2, CrO4. This uh, potassium chromate solution, so an aqueous solution of potassium chromate, is actually a yellow solution. So it has a, a yellow color. When you mix yellow uh, potassium chromate solid in water, you get this yellow solution. Plus, if you add, uh, if you mix this with barium nitrate, so BaNO3, 2. Now, barium nitrate is a clear solution. Right, so when you mix this yellow solution of potassium chromate and this clear solution of barium nitrate, you get some products. And one of those products turns out to be a yellow solid. Right, so we end up getting a yellow solid as one of our products. So you mix together two solutions, one being a yellow solution and a clear solution, and you end up with a yellow solid that comes out when you mix these two together after they react together. So what actually happens here? What is the identity of this yellow solid? So I, I purposely have not written the products. Um, but one of those products will be a yellow solid. Uh, one of the questions you want to ask yourself is what is the identity of that yellow solid? We know it has to be different from our reactants in some way. Oh, let me write aqueous here as well. Um, so both of those are aqueous solutions. So, um, so yeah, so we know that we get some products and we want to be able to identify what is the identity of this yellow solid that we get when we react these two uh, aqueous solutions. Right now, this is this actually isn't an easy question. In fact, this is one of the hardest things that um, that can be done by beginning chemistry students and even experienced chemists when they, you know, encounter some new reaction that they've never seen before. Um, it, it's it's a struggle to try to be able to predict what the product is, but it's one of the most powerful aspects of chemistry is its predictive power to be able to predict products. So uh, so let's think about this. So if we think about what's going on in solution. Right, so when you put both of these guys in solution, the potassium chromate and barium nitrate, uh, we know that these are ionic, so they're going to dissociate in aqueous solution. So in the case of potassium chromate, uh, you end up with two potassium cations hydrated plus uh, one chromate ion. Right, with a negative two charge. 
So just like we looked at in one of the previous videos, these ions are going to be hydrated by water, right? Same thing happens with barium nitrate, right? So you end up with BaNO3 aqueous, right? When we look at this guy in solution, uh, we're going to end up with a barium cation, right? So Ba2 plus, uh, plus two of these nitrate ions. Right, so we've got these four different ions in solution, right? Um, and we want to be able to, we know that the solid that is formed has to be some sort of combination of these ions. So we can make use of what we know about solids in order to uh, figure out what this solid actually is. So the first thing we know about a solid is that in order for it to form, it must be a neutrally charged species, right? So when ions form a solid, it has a net neutral charge. When ions form a solid, it has a net neutral charge. Right. So we know that for this solid that we that we get from this reaction, it has to have a net neutral charge. And generally, these solids are formed from one cation and one anion. Right. So these ionic solids. Are formed from one type of anion and cation. Right, so basically what we need to do is look at all of the different cation and anion combinations that we can get from what we have uh, dissociated in solution, right? And I should also write aqueous next to each of these guys as well, right? So all of these guys are in solution and some combination of these guys is going to form the yellow solid. So we can just go through here, right? We know that potassium and chromate can form potassium chromate. Uh, we know that potassium and nitrate can form potassium nitrate. So we could have KNO3 as well. We know we can get barium chromate. And we know we can get barium nitrate. And this should be two. Right. So we know that these are the four different species that we can form. Right. Just based off of what we know about uh, solids. Right. They have to be neutrally charged. All of these guys are neutrally charged. They're, they're formed with one anion and one cation. That's true of all four of these guys. And now we just start eliminating them based off of what we know. So one thing we know is that two of these are our reactants, right? We know potassium chromate is a yellow solution, so that guy can't be our yellow solid. And we know that barium nitrate is the clear solution that we started with, so that guy can't be our, um, our yellow solid, right? So now just, just based off of eliminating the reactants, we've narrowed it down to two species that this could possibly be, right? Potassium nitrate and barium chromate. Now, one thing we know about potassium nitrate or that experienced chemists know about potassium nitrate is that it's a clear solution. So this guy is clear. So if it were to form a solid, it would form a white solid. So this guy is also eliminated as well because it if it were to form a solid, it would form a clear solid. So that means that our actual yellow solid must be barium chromate, right? So now we can write out the full precipitation reaction in the following way, right? We'll have aqueous potassium chromate reacting with aqueous barium nitrate to yield a barium chromate solid and aqueous uh, potassium nitrate, right? So this would be your full precipitation reaction. And notice that I put the phase uh, for everything when I write aqueous here, yep. So notice that I, I put the phase for everything to show that everything is an aqueous solution and that what we get out is a solid, right? 
Okay, so those are precipitation reactions. Um, and to balance this guy, I forgot to, to finish the balancing here. So that guy should have a two in front of the potassium to balance with everything else on the reactant side. Okay, so uh, for acid-base reactions, those were precipitation reactions. Acid-base reactions are fairly simple to keep track of. Uh, we already talked about a, a simple definition of acids and bases given by uh, Zvante Arrhenius in one of our previous videos. He said that um, an acid is going to be anything that dissociates and produces H plus ions and a base is going to be something that dissociates and produces OH ions. However, um, that's a very specific definition. We need something that's more general, something that captures more cases of acids and bases. And that uh, theory was given to us by Johannes, uh, Johannes Bronsted and Thomas Lowry in the early 20th century, where, um, where they gave a very general definition for acids and bases that centered only around a proton, right? H plus. So when I say proton, I'm talking about H plus ions. And they base the general theory of acids and bases off of just the movement of these protons. They classified an acid as a proton donor and a base as a proton acceptor. Right, so you can classify something as an acid-base reaction just by tracking and seeing if a proton is accepted and donated. Right, so an example here would be if we take hydroxide, aqueous hydroxide, plus acetic acid, which has the formula HC2H3O2. And this is also an aqueous solution. When these guys react together, you produce water. So you have liquid water plus the acetate anion. Right, so um, do you see it? Do you see the proton being donated or accepted? Well, if you don't see it, let's go through it. So, um, so if you notice here, acetic acid has this uh, H, this proton here, right? That's attached to it initially. And in the products, it's the acetate anion. It's lost that proton. So what happens here is it donates that proton to hydroxide and hydroxide becomes H2O, right? So within the theory of Bronsted and Lowry, we see that uh, acetic acid is donating the proton. So this guy is gonna be the proton donor. So it is an acid. And this guy is gonna be a proton acceptor. right, making it the base, right? But see, this is a little bit more general than the theory of Arrhenius where he was just looking at what ions dissolve in solution. There are, at, there are uh, bases that don't include OH groups and so they would also easily be able to function within this uh, Bronsted-Lowry theory. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. That covers precipitation and acid-base reactions. And in the next video, we'll talk about oxidation reduction reactions.